guys welcome back to another video another week of workouts these are a staple on my channel at this point I'll be taking you through yet another week of training showing you my workouts in the gym what I do out of the gym and I tried to make this one a little bit more vlog style life has been pretty crazy busy with a lot of traveling here and there and so having a week where I'm actually home and just able to go to my normal gym is so nice and much needed. This week you can expect four fully explained strength workouts in the gym as well as a couple other days where I'm doing fun stuff or I'm trying new stuff. One big announcement that I wanted to make before we get started though is that Gymshark is having their second biggest sale of the year. It's their summer sale. It's coming Thursday, June 29th. You can expect up to 60% off select lines which is pretty freaking crazy. I'm obviously always wearing Gymshark in the gym, out of the gym. You'll see that in this video as well. If you download the Gymshark app, you can actually get a sneak peek of what's gonna be on sale. I would also highly suggest creating an account, adding things to your wish list, and so when the sale goes live, you can just check out and be done. So yes, lots of savings ahead. In addition to the sale, you can use my code Chris for an additional 10% off. I just wanna say a huge thank you. If you do choose to use my code to shop and even just thank you for being here, watching this video, you know, it keeps my channel going. Yes, the Gymshark Summer Sale is happening June 29th, so don't miss it. I'll have their site linked down below, but without further ado, let's get into this week of workouts. Good morning and happy Monday. I'm starting off this week with an upper body sesh at the gym, push day, so chest, shoulders, and triceps. Lately, I've been liking starting with a push because then I can split my two upper body days with legs in between. But yeah, to warm up today, I spent about five minutes or so on my mat and just doing things like inchworm to push-ups, lunge plus thread the needle, and plenty of down dogs to stretch and wake up my body. First exercise is the barbell bench press. Let's just ignore the little tag sticking out of my sports bra, which by the way, this outfit and the others that I'm wearing throughout the week will be on sale. I always start out with just the bar and then I gradually add weight. Now, barbell bench press is one of those big compound moves like squats, deadlifts, barbell overhead press that people typically start a workout with. And usually I would just do the bench press on its own, but for some reason I threw in lateral raises to make this a super set. But since we are just using light to moderate weight for these, I figured it was kind of like a continuation of my warm up since we will be doing shoulders next. I worked up to 95 pounds or 25s on each side for my bench. I did eight reps for my remaining sets followed by 10 to 12 lateral raises. Next, I'm doing seated military press. So I believe I started at 30s and knocked out 10 reps to start. This exercise is one that I really like to try and push to do more weight on. So we will be making some jumps here. 30s moved pretty well, so 35s are up next. I went for six reps and just to show you, here's what my first couple of reps look like versus my last. I'm low-key fighting for my life on these and the face, yeah, not cute. Now here's me overthinking with the big boy 40s in my hands and once I finally mustered up the strength to get them up, I get, um, I think two reps <laughs> and push till failure. It is definitely times like these where I wish I had a spotter, but anyway, I went back to the 35s to finish off my one final set of these. Moving on, I'm staying here, but have the bench set at about 45 degrees for incline dumbbell flies. Palms and dumbbells are facing towards each other, and while keeping a slight bend in my elbow, I'm lowering my arms so that they are in line with my chest. 15 reps for four sets. I'm also thinking now that I could have supersetted my lateral raises here, since these are both more of an accessory move, but I mean, it really doesn't matter. When it comes to supersets, I usually like to pair together two exercises of opposing muscle groups, so chest and then shoulders, or chest and then triceps, but sometimes I like to superset exercises of the same muscle group, which honestly burns so good, and you will see that in this next bit here. It's time to fire up the triceps, so I'm doing body weight tricep dips, and you can always use a resistance band for assistance, or use an actual assisted dip machine, or just do tricep dips on a bench, whichever variation works for you. I'm doing five dips followed by five tricep push-ups. So yes, I went back and forth between five dips and five push-ups, 
five times. So by the end of this, I completed 25 dips and 25 push-ups. Definitely modify anything as it gets harder, but bottom line, just get it done. And at this point, my upper body was pretty donezo, so I'm just finishing off with a forearm plank. Now, if you watched my video where I took the official Army Combat Fitness test, you would have seen that the plank was one of the six events we needed to do. Today, I basically wanted to see if I could hold my plank for the same amount of time or even beat it, which, um, yeah, that was ambitious of me. I don't know if I will ever be able to hold a four minute plank again. Like doing this alone in the gym, I'm lucky enough to get a minute and a half without stopping but anyway that's how i finished things off today did reach my desired time of about four minutes 15 seconds but i did have to take a few breaks in between i really don't know how i was able to hold a four minute plank when i was in korea i went into this thinking i could even beat that and go for more but no <laughs> your girl had to stop three times and take at least 15 second rests i did not hold it for the entirety of that my upper body it's fried. All right, push day complete. All right, happy Tuesday. It's time for legs. Now, since the start of summer, I've been playing way more volleyball. My team starts practicing in, I want to say June, twice a week. And I would love to do more videos this summer that include more volleyball. So if you guys want to see that, let me know. With playing more volleyball, I do tweak or at least try to tweak my training a little. I was not feeling any sort of heavy squat action today because I never want to be too sore or too fatigued where I'm not able to jump at practice. <laughs> so moving with a lighter weight, a lot of the time feels better for my body. I'm starting with this super set of good mornings and alternating beef stance squats. 10 good mornings to wake up the hammies. I'm hinging at the hips, I'm shooting my butt back, and I'm keeping my core nice and tight. I do re-rack the barbell and switch to a front rack position, which you could also do these rack to the back, but I just wanted to switch things up. I love unilateral work on leg days, so these beef stance squats are great because whichever leg is in front is doing most of the work. The other leg is just there as a kickstand for support. I completed eight reps per side, so six total and completed four sets of that superset. Next, I'm doing barbell RDLs, keeping the barbell close against my shins and knees slightly bent. I'm hinging, imagining my glutes are opening to opposite sides while I'm shooting my butt back. Imagine your glutes are a book or a double door and you're opening it. I'm driving everything back up through my heels with core braced the entire time, 10 reps followed by 20 jumping lunges. This is gonna get my heart rate up and I do try to implement more explosiveness, jumping, landing, as these are all very important for volleyball. I'm doing four sets of that. Moving on, I'm doing weighted step ups with this cable machine that my gym has, but you could also do this with dumbbells as well. For these, I'm really focusing on whichever leg is elevated, making sure that I'm not using the other leg to help get me up, so no pushing off. I'm driving through the heel of the working leg and slowly, slowly making my way back down. I did eight slow and controlled reps on one side and then eight on the other for four sets. Next, I'm doing a leg extension drop set. So I'm starting with a slightly heavier weight and I'm doing 10 reps. This is a doable, manageable weight, but those last reps, you know, get a little bit challenging. And then I dropped the weight to do an ant wrap. So as many reps as possible. I went super light with the weight on these, but I'm trying to get 10, 12, 15, just to really burn up the quads. I literally could only do three sets of this, so. Yeah, and to finish off this workout, I'm ending with one last superset. For some functional core stability, I'm doing offset kettlebell marches. I'm holding a kettlebell in one hand and I'm alternating my legs as I bring them to about 90 degrees in line with my hip. Left, right is one, two. So I count it to 10 before switching arms. 10 count on the other side. And to add in a bit of conditioning, I'm doing 10 cows on the ski erg. If I remember correctly, came out to be about 35 second intervals. I basically never use the ski erg in my gym, so I really don't know what came over me, but this was a great full body burnout. Legs, back, triceps, your heart, it's all working. I completed three rounds of the offset kettlebell marches and ski erg intervals to wrap up this sesh in the gym. Good afternoon, y'all. I am getting ready to go to the gym, prepping 
my little pre-workout drink. I got a brand new tub of pre-workout from Beam. And this is the Hawaiian Breeze flavor, which I have not tried yet, but I've been wanting to. We're gonna see if it's good, but I'm pretty sure it will be because I have yet to try a flavor from Beam that I did not enjoy. Doot. I've got a back and biceps workout plan today. This mixer is from Beam as well. Honestly, I feel like I don't need to use this mixer. Usually I just stir my drink with my straw, but sometimes it's just fun to use it. Also, I used this cup earlier today for my greens. So if you see some leftover residue, turn that. All right, Hawaiian breeze. That is good. Tastes like watermelon. That is delicious. I'm gonna put some ice in it actually. Feeling very cute. Put together a fit <gasps> with the pre-workout it's giving little mermaid aerial vibes <gasps> oh wait that's so cute wait that's so cute i need a photo all right to kick start this pull day with a bang we are doing pull-ups i'm doing assisted pull-ups with my heavier resistance band i'm doing three sets of 10 reps and i know these may not be the prettiest of reps but we are determined to finish them out and there is no better feeling than fighting fighting or that last rep. Pull-ups are a lovely little transition into the lat pull-down. So here we are. I'm first doing a standard lat pull-down with a wide grip. So my grip is wider than shoulder width. I would definitely try to implement a longer pause at the bottom to really get the most out of this exercise. Super setting eight reps of this wider grip with eight reps of a chin-up grip. So my hands are just about shoulder width now and my palms are facing towards me. I did end up dropping the weight slightly between the wide grip and the chin-up grip in later sets, but totally up to you. If if you can manage the same weight, do that. I did four sets of this superset. Next, we do have another superset, which we will be focusing on biceps and then back. So setting up, I have a bench at an incline of about 45 degrees. I grabbed an easy bar to curl with and then a lighter set of dumbbells, which we will use in just a sec. First, I'm doing 12 reps of a chest supported easy bar curl. The upper part of my arm is staying pretty much pinned to my side while my forearms are the only thing moving. I find that I get a full range of motions for every rep when I do it like so. So I love this chest supported variation. Then I care drop the bar and grab onto my dumbbells for chest supported reverse flies to hit the upper back and shoulders. I apologize because I did not realize how speedy I'm going through these. Definitely would recommend going through these a bit slower and with more control and if that means going for a lighter weight, do it. I'm keeping a soft bend in my elbows and squeezing my shoulder blades together as I raise my arms. 10 reverse flies, I did that superset four times. Next, I'm doing a single arm bent over row. So with a heavier dumbbell, I am rowing one side at a time. I'm keeping my arm out on a bench in front of me for support and leverage. And I'm just rowing the weight back, leading with my elbow past my torso. I'm almost imagining that I'm putting the weight into my pocket as it comes right up against my hip. I'm doing eight reps per side for four sets. I'm grabbing two sets of dumbbells next, something a little bit heavier that I can bicep curl with, and then a lighter pair that I can bent over Y fly with. First, I'm doing isometric bicep curls, meaning while one side is curling, the other is holding at a 90 degree angle. I kind of be looking jiggity jacked here. Wow, okay, we love to see it. I am alternating between sides here, so five reps on the right, five reps on the left, and then I repeat that so that we do 10 reps per side. So back to five on the right, and then five on the left. Those last few reps should feel like a struggle but that's okay because this is our last exercise for the biceps so we might as well burn it out right away i'm grabbing my lighter dumbbells for bent over y raises exactly as the name says i am bent over against my legs i'm raising my arms in a y-ish shape so not directly out to my sides or directly straight in front of me i'm going right in between in that diagonal i'm keeping my neck neutral and i'm again squeezing my shoulder blades to hit the upper back four sets of this superset will wrap this lift up Okay, y'all, I just finished my lift, but I do want to finish off my workout with a little bit of cardio. On my back days, I've been adding either some sort of rowing workout at the end or a boxing workout, which I really want to do, but I haven't done it at the gym yet because I'm kind of embarrassed. I literally just bought these boxing gloves from Amazon. My gym has one pair sitting around, but it's like a communal pair and I don't really want to... The only thing is the punching bags are in this room. Right now there's a lot of people. My boxing skills are not, I'm a very beginner. Let's just say that. So I don't wanna make a fool of myself. And it's also very loud when I punch. So I don't, I don't know what to do. But it's like, this is the gym that I pay for. So I should be able to utilize everything that it has. 
it's just a little piece of advice for you. If you ever feel embarrassed to use some sort of equipment in your gym, don't be because you deserve to use it as much as anyone else. It doesn't matter if you're not as experienced, you have to at least try it out first to ever get used to it, you know? So luckily the punching bag that is hidden slightly behind a pillar opened up so I got the courage to do this damn boxing workout and once I got into it, I didn't even think about whether or not I looked silly. The workout I chose today didn't get into any crazy combos. So I felt comfortable enough with what I was doing. Simple combos, boxer jumps, jump ropes, push-ups, just all the things to keep me moving around the bag. I've been really enjoying boxing and literally even just shadow boxing at home. Shadow boxing is when you're just punching the air <laughs> because it combines cardio and strength and it's just something new and fun to try. So I definitely would recommend. Also, self-defense never hurts. Y'all don't want to catch these hands. But yeah, quick 15 minute class is what I finished my pull day with. Y'all, happy Thursday. Today my workout is going to be yoga, but we are doing a little differently. So my friend Julia, she had texted me on Monday asking if I wanted to go to this yoga class and I was like, what is, what is this? I was a little confused at first because the location said Temple. And if you're familiar with San Francisco, Temple is a nightclub. It's probably one of the biggest nightclubs here that I know of or that I've been to. And I've only ever been there too. Go clubbing. <laughs> yeah, this is like the last thing I expected, but based on the website and the event page or whatever, it looks pretty freaking cool. So we're going to that. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to film, but like, look. Okay, let's see if I can show you. Just a preview, that's that's what we're working with. There's lights all across the ceiling, lights on the side of the room, all the pillars light up, like great club setting. And I feel like it would be a very immersive yoga setting. So yeah, I'm really excited. I'm pretty stoked. At this point in the week, my body is usually feeling the effects of all the workouts, so some yoga will be perfect. So by night, this is indeed Temple Nightclub. You walk through here. If you go downstairs, that takes you to the hip hop floor. And then through here, it leads to this lounge area, also usually a bar area. But today it was very zen out. They had slippers and incense going and a whole table with little bites and even a hot tea station, which was lovely. Once I got closer to our start time, they opened up the main room and... Oh my God, this is the craziest thing ever. my friends i am back in the gym on this fine saturday morning after a proper rest day on friday today i was in the mood for a bit of strength and conditioning so i came up with the bulk of my workout like i wrote out the circuit that i wanted to do in my notes app but for the warm-up i just kind of gave myself free reign to do whatever i felt i needed so dynamic stretching is always a yes i did want to try out the manual treadmill because i've never set foot on one because it's curved you basically set the pace and i would say that it's best used for higher intensity workouts with short or interval sprints for example i did include sprints into my workout today so i did need to test out this treadmill first i did about a five minute jog just an easy pace just to get a feel for this and then i saw that there was a setting to do sled pushes so i threw in some of that 20 second intervals mixed with rest mixed with more running and by 10 minutes or so i was warmed up and ready for my circuit today i'm just using one heavier kettlebell and then a set of mediums so first i'm grabbing the heavier kettlebell and I'm doing eight B-stance RDLs. Earlier in the week, we did those B-stance squats. So similar to that, we're just using our back leg as a little kickstand and all the work is being done in that front leg. Eight reps on both sides. Next, I'm going right into eight kneeling upright rows. 
So kneeling, making sure my hips are tucked in, core is tight. I'm doing an upright row for the shoulders. Eight of those. Next, I need those two medium kettlebells for this exercise that I've been loving. Basically, it's a suitcase deadlift into a jump. I'm first picking up the weight for the deadlift, I'm placing it back down, and then I'm jumping up with no weight. That's one rep, and I completed that eight times. Again, with volleyball season in mind, I've been such a fan of these. Laying on my back for the next exercise, I'm doing eight hollow hold chest presses. Be careful, please. Please be careful when you're getting the kettlebell up because you do not want to drop this on your face. That would not be good. You can see I'm not holding it directly above my face, but rather above my chest. And I'm pressing the kettlebell away from me as I keep my elbows in to hit more of the triceps. I'm also focusing on a three second countdown and then quick explosive push up. And the final bit of this circuit is back on the treadmill. So I am doing Tabata sprints. And Tabata is just a style of hit where you are basically working for twice as long as you are resting. Today I'm doing 20 second sprints followed by a 10 second rest. I did that twice and that was one round of this circuit complete. I did five sets of this circuit. Whether you can do three, four, five, that is totally up to you. Regardless, I can almost guarantee that this will be a very sweaty one. I did try to minimize my rest during the actual round and waited to rest until completing everything once through. I'm definitely gonna be saving this one to do again because I really, really enjoyed it. One last bit for this full body conditioning day. I wanted to throw in some abs, but not just boring sit-ups or crunches kind of abs. The TRX is probably one of my favorite ways to train abs when I actually make time for it in the gym. I have it set so that the straps come to about mid calf level and I'm slipping my feet into them so I can get into a plank. From here, I'm doing 10 pike up to knee tucks. So one pike up, one knee tuck, that's one rep and I'm doing that 10 times. I did three total rounds of that and that's it. I did end off my week with another rest day slash active recovery day on Sunday. I really enjoyed you guys coming along with me and I hope you did too. y'all that is a wrap on this week of workouts i really really enjoyed this one i just i love the variety i think this just like really encapsulates what fitness means to me being consistent challenging myself but also seeking out fun things to do that still keep me active keep me healthy it all just makes me so happy so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please be sure to give it a big thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already reminder that the gymshark summer sale starts june 29th so if you're watching this after that it's already live my code Chris will save you an additional 10% on top of the already up to 60% off select lines. So get the goods, get the savings. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. That is it for this video. I will see you guys in the next one.